Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. It's been a long time since we have <laughs> been out and enjoying Mother Nature somewhere other than our own backyard. Oh, this is so beautiful. We miss this. This is nice. We've been home trying to get caught up, caught up, caught up. And sometimes you just got to say, you know what? Prioritize your own time. Yeah. And, you know, the question one of our friends had asked us before, and said, so, do you guys take your, like, weekends for yourself? And, and truly, we never take a day off. We, we never take a day off, really. Um, in its entirety, we're pretty much making videos, I would say, 360 out of 365 days we make videos per year. Mm -hmm. You know, day, days of the year. There might be five days that we miss the entire year. And in reality, it's probably more like two or three. Well, like this year, I, I know off the top of my head, three. Three days and two days we had no internet yeah so that was why you know if we're in a typical situation we'll always be making videos and then we have people that we help with uh energy work uh you know we do really a combination of different things from biofield tuning sound healing uh reiki techniques pranic healing qigong helping people with getting organized with meditation and Getting on a good schedule, also, you know, talking to people about nutrition, things along those lines, healthy lifestyle. And, of course, connecting to your spirit guides is always a favorite. People love connecting to their spirit guides and finding out about their past lives. Uh, that is most definitely something that everybody seems to have an interest in, as well as your astro astrological chart. So, you know, we're always doing something, but that's, it's okay because, you know, we, we love doing it. That's the bottom line. So when it's your purpose and, and you know why you are here, well, then, you know, doing your purpose, it really isn't work. No, right. It really isn't work. It's just, you know, it's your existence. It's your essence. It's your excellence, I would say. Though I can't say just drifting out there, I could do that. Yeah, we could do that too all day. Absolutely. You know, that's a beautiful thing, connecting to Mother Nature and just letting your mind go and just experiencing her, you know, watching, say, a hummingbird or, or watching, you know, some geese come in and land or you know, if you're lucky enough to catch a deer or some other wildlife, just interacting in a manner in which they don't even really know you're there. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. You know, that's, I love that, that the way you put that. Um, just kind of existing and taking in the sweetness of Mother Nature. Well, as you say, you know, basically, not a human doing, but a human being. And most yep. of the time, we are humans doing instead of being. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, there's some things I wanted to talk about. And we had shared with one of our family members how uh, one of our friends, a good friend, had been diagnosed with a broken hip and had x-rays to prove it, went to get a checkup with the doctor uh, to see if things had deteriorated and saw it wasn't broken anymore after some energy work was done. Mm -hmm. So the question was, why does that happen with some people and not others? And the answer is, it really lies in the individual. I found out when I was sick, the guides told me clear out, and I was just a kid. Uh, it happened a couple of times where they told me, you know, this voice just comes in my mind. You know, you let yourself get sick for a reason. You let yourself get sick for a reason. There's a purpose there. When I had limes, it was basically a purpose. And I had just started to get better from blowing out two discs, L4 and L5. And I was just starting to regain uh, my old my old mobility, albeit, you know, yeah, I was a little bit stiffer, but I was getting better. And then the limes hit, and all of a sudden I felt like I was 85 or 90 when I was, you know, only about 30 at the time. There was a lesson to be learned. And, you know, the bottom line lesson for me was I was not on my path. Each time I've had major issues, it's because I was not on the path I had chosen. And that's really the answer for that particular friend. When we have major life-changing illness, often, you know, it's a case of there's something in our life that is not going in the direction 
that the higher self, the oversoul, wants us to go in. And the mystery is, how do you figure that out if you have layers and layers of trauma and if you are, have been way far off your path for quite a long time, you are going to have certain situations while moving back into alignment where life is going to change. So it's, it's about finding the truth and, and the depth of it all. Well, you know, in my case, you know, I was used to working 10 hours a day, sometimes more, six days a week, and then running to the gym six days a week and working out for an hour to two hours every day, too, as well as doing other things that we all have to do when you're running a household. What did it do? It made me stay still, and I had tons of time to, to reflect and to think about things, and it also got me deeper into Qigong and meditation and things along those lines. It eventually took me away from, um, you know, Taekwondo and Judo and, you know, the more physical martial arts and basically guided me to Qigong and Tai Chi. And it was life-changing because it, it got me to go and introspect a lot. And then it made me realize, you know, I hate my job. I hate what I'm doing. Do you know? I, I just do it because it pays the bills, but I hate it. I feel like 50, 60 hours a week, I'm wasting my life. And it, you know, really was a wake up call. And so that had to change. And the relationship wasn't right. The place wasn't right. Nothing was right. Nothing was, you know, optimal for achieving the life's mission. And when I got on the path, then my health started to get better and better and better. And at 50. I was in way, way better shape and, and better health overall and a much happier person than when I was, say, 30. Mm -hmm. And that happens, too. It does. You know, and often healers have healing crises. That's something that's super common, especially people that are to go and to help others heal. Often you'll have a healing crisis that may threaten your very life, and it will often get you back on that path. It will. You know, it's just... Something for you to figure out. Those healing crises are important. You know, you do want to be grateful. You do want to absorb as much information as you can. Like, what are you learning? You really want to sit down and ask yourself, okay, what is this teaching me? And usually these teachings you carry with you for the rest of your life. And generally you run into more than one person that you're going to help with that teaching. Most definitely. And I wanted to share with you guys... Uh, information that we've been getting from the Galactics, uh, Laurel, and also from mostly Isis, but others as well, other guides as well, uh, such as Lakshmi, White Buffalo Calf Woman, and, and others, Yeshua also. And that's the fact that, you know, here on the 3D plane, this is the only plane of existence um, that has kind of its own set of rules. Things are a little different here. This, you know, is a heavy, dense experience that can be amazingly wonderful, amazingly sensuous, or amazingly miserable. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's basically, well, that's the coin, you know, the two sides of the coin. And it is an experience that offers a tremendous amount of growing. And the word that was used recently... Uh, that was used by Laurel when she was saying when the body when when the spirit leaves the body here it's like leaving the cocoon because we blossom into something new from the experiences here we blossom into something new we gain valuable experience you're in a very very challenging time right now this time is super challenging yet the experiences gained, the soul growth, can take you so far and basically elevate you. Or if we give in to pressures by certain forces, it can actually still pull you down too. So we have to be very careful. I had asked her a question that I was really curious about. Being that, you know, when you get out of this density, there's really no time. So there really is no death, so to speak. And, you know, that is technically correct. And I said, well, what about the wars going on? Because you're in a war right now. You're in a battle right now. There's battles raging all throughout 4D, and there's battles raging in 5 as well. 
you know, we've we've had times where she was worried about her ship or there was things happening to her ship and it had to be moved. And, you know, we got interrupted because basically they were having emergencies. Mm -hmm. So it's real. But what she shared was the equivalent of death there on the higher densities is really just kind of a disorientation or a confusion. It's not like what we have here where we're actually shedding a body. Uh, It's not really a shedding of a body. It's a disorientation in which the entity can either spiral up or spiral down. And I think that's fascinating. And the terminology she used about that, spiraling, spinning, think about the Milky Way galaxy, you know, think about the shape of the galaxies, the spiral that we see all throughout nature. Again, this is part of the fractal universe that we're in. You could rise up in the spiral. You could rise. You could lower down in the spiral. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's it's. I want to say it's your choice. I I guess ultimately it is. You know, but how exactly? What does that look like on the inner inner workings of things is yet to be seen. But it's the spiral action of source. I thought was curious. And again, there's a lot of lessons to be learned out of Buddhism, truly. And we've talked about Buddhist detachment. And we have to kind of maintain that sort of equilibrium. Because, you know, as we've shared, you know, there are so many spirits that are still trapped on Civil War battlefields. Here we are so much later, you know, we're, we're, uh, you know, 160, 170 years later, and there's still spirits walking around the battlefield saying, what happened? What happened? I don't understand. You know, it, it's it's sad, but it's true. We, we've seen it many times where we go by an area where there was a car crash. A car crash could have happened in 1960. But we still see the, the spirit, the, the essence of the person or the ghost, if you want to say it, still walking the same road, dumbfounded, and they don't understand. No, they don't. And... It's sad. They're they're just in this existence. They're in this moment of time of confusion. And I know you guys can relate if I put it like this. If you've ever had an epiphany and suddenly the surrounding, your surrounding situations suddenly change because of this one epiphany. Well, when dead people are stuck in an existence in confusion, they're lacking that epiphany. So they just sort of sit there. And they're missing that. But, you know, even they have the ability to have these epiphanies. And then suddenly their whole perspective can change. And at that point, that's when they can move forward. Emotions are very, very powerful things. They're powerful tools, but we have to gain control of our emotions. And and that's really, uh, you know, one of the primary lessons throughout meditation. And one of the ones that we see in Buddhism. It's a matter of pulling ourselves out so we can rise above. You know, we want to always have that compassion and cultivate that compassion and love for all beings. But at the same time, we can't allow ourselves to be spiraled out of control because, you know, again, these darker energies, they're all about bringing about emotional responses so that there'll be more emotional responses. And before you know it, the responses spiral out of control in a negative way. So, you know, it's all about rising above that. Now, that takes time, especially if there's a lot of trauma involved. And that's why we see so much trauma in this world. It's a tool that's used to keep things spiraling downward instead of rising upwards on that spiral. And again, it's it's another reason why we should have a daily meditative spiritual practice because that will gain control over our mind. And, you know, it's definitely not an easy thing to do. Yes, yeah, most people can't focus for just even a minute or two on one solid thing. Uh, meditation is, is not a tool to be underestimated at all. Mm-mm. No, it can really help to give yourself a lot of healing, um, especially with the brain. When the trauma is done, it's like a physical change to the brain and and it can change your emotions physically do things to you that you may feel you cannot control and if you do the meditation over time it might take a lifetime it might take a lot of loss it it could you know sometimes there's different things that can help you heal the brain 
um, different things out there. I, I believe in plant medicine. I think it's very, very helpful for these things. Um, but it, it's about learning those, coming across those and taking the losses. If you have to lose something to gain something, then that's what you do. So just some thoughts we wanted to share, just some quick thoughts, and I thought it was fascinating. Uh, some of the info from the guides has been just incredible, and uh, it really is inspiring at the same time to know you know, that we do go on forever, and we can have all sorts of different experiences in all sorts of different realms, because you know, eternity truly is ours. It's right there in front of us all the time. We can manufacture and make ourselves a beautiful reality and and heaven on earth is something that's inevitable it's absolutely inevitable because she's ascending and it's up to us to join her thank you guys for your support on ko-fi and patreon as always thanks for checking out medicinal foods as well lots of great products there god bless and namaste namaste